Well, one more about yeah. overblows. Um, sometimes I teach beginners how yeah. to overblow because I think yeah. if you start in, in right away with good breathing techniques, you, you can learn overblows. Um, I've done the same thing and I've not done the same thing with teaching. And, and I, I mean, the jury's still out on it, Ben. I mean, we don't know what happens. Like, I mean, we're going to find out in five or six years pretty much what's going to happen. Be, I mean, knowledge can never hurt you. It's up to the individual. But as you know, YouTube and stuff and kids, okay, you combined giving a kid all of the, one of the more, more advanced techniques and extra notes on an instrument right away can result in problems, okay? And kids are attracted to what is new and what is hard and difficult because they want to be able to say, I did the overblow. Did it's it. not really about getting the note. It's about getting the accomplishment of, yeah. you know, I did that. And um, what's going to happen is you're going to see two, you're going to see just like anything else, there are going to be guys that are that are taking it and, and running with it and guys that are not. But... The, the young players that I'm seeing right now that are really excelling didn't actually start overblowing. So, like, and I'm referring to R.J. Harmon and, um, and, uh, and uh, who is Jay Gaunt is the other one. Those are the two young American hotshot heart players right now. And they're, they're real good. I got interviews with them on YouTube. They're fastly... Um, getting they'll probably they probably surpassed me by now already you know what i mean not in in so many in different ways you know but those kids didn't start overblowing so i don't know what's going to happen with people that just start overblowing i'm afraid for that but maybe that's just the the parent in me you know or the old guy you know what i mean maybe that's you know but again knowledge can never hurt you unless you let it don't you think the, the elder will. players are now a little bit afraid for, of people using overblows because they think it's, 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 it's nonsense, you shouldn't do it, that's not what it's meant for, the harmonica, yeah. and you should stick to the traditional first position blue stuff. And how do you feel about this? this? Yeah, um, well, I'm, I think that that attitude is um, starting to disappear. I think I'd like to think that I've had something to do with that as a blues player. I mean, I know that, you know, Rick Estrin approves of the way I play. And he likes it. And I can't think of a guy that plays better traditional harmonica than Rick. And, um, you know, it, uh, they don't sound like overblows when I play them because I bend underneath them and bend over them and down. And, you know, I mean, I mess them up. But I mess up bend notes, too. And I mess up regular notes. And, you know, we all do. And so, like, I think that attitude is pretty much antiquated. It's the thing of the past. And... I think it's fear-based more than anything, and uh, I don't, it's certainly not based in knowledge because the bend note was the same way at one time. And, you know, it's just if you just look back long enough, it's no different than that, you know. Yeah, I think people sh shouldn't be afraid of, of doing new stuff. Well, why should you, yeah. shouldn't you use new stuff? It's, yeah, it's I mean, there, so why not use I, it? Imagine if Kim had a couple. Holy fuck. Oops, heard me. Yeah, but yeah. I mean, you know, like a powerful player like that with a couple extra notes up top there, the melodies that he comes up with in his head sometimes, especially in third position, are so awesome and powerful and the phrasing is so incredible that like, I don't know, I think I've done some things that were probably influenced by Kim with overblows, you know what I mean? And so it's like, you know, I don't even hear music like, oh, that's an overblow or that. I think that's a sharp five. You know what I mean? That's a flat five or that's a, you know, that's a sharp one. I'm not even thinking in terms of overblows or, or even in terms of four draw, four blow anymore. I, I think like the same way I, I, a guitar player would think or, you know, about music, except I have a much vaguer um, image in my head because I don't have a fretboard to, to visualize or a piano, you know, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's how Howard is thinking. He's right, like he's playing piano. Right, that's how he explains his right his overblow play. I more or less think of like a, s a set of stairs, and you know what I mean with half steps in between. You know, so but that's something like that. Yeah, yeah. Any advice for beginner harp players? Yeah, yeah, de definitely. My advice is t totally listen to Little Walter and like Sonny Boy and the old guys. And I, I know that sounds crazy because you know. 
people think the way I play it, it's like, it doesn't sound like those guys, but I really think that that's the foundation and, and it should be for a while. I mean, you know, there's new guys and, and stuff, but for me, I, I think once you get that blues essence, then you can go anywhere with it. You know what I mean? Unless you're a chromatic guy or something, you know, and then, you know, you want to play classical music, I would say don't listen to those guys, you know, but if you just want to play, pick up diatonic and be a badass, I'd say you have to start with Little Walter. And so it, the, my method of learning and teaching for myself and for others is imitation, assimilation, innovation. So first you, you play and rewind it and learn it note for note as close as you can. Or, or better yet, first just take it in. Just listen to it, just for nice. Christ's sakes. Yeah, just feel it. What are they saying with it? Then start to try to figure out what you want to learn. Then you start to combine different players' approaches. That's the assimilation element of it, where you're matching Butterfield and Bowman and, and Kim Wilson and Howard, and you're pulling these, and these influences start to combine. And then innovation... I think can only truly, or well, well, 100% of the time can only be obtained through f some sort of formal musical study. Now, I don't mean going to college or anything. I mean learning some scales, some basic chord structure, hanging out with musicians that aren't harmonica players. That, and then, because music itself dictates endless possibilities, infinite, like, like uh, Hank's shirt the, with the snakes, it, it, it's endless ideas that are that are based in scales. There, there, there are only as many as there are numbers in math and way. It's like three times three equals nine. How many different ways can you combine, you know, three threes to, you know what I mean? It's a lot. And that's just in a short number. So when you get up to three octaves chromatic, I mean, the, the, end, the implications are unbelievable. There, there's still so much yet that is music has, that is yet to be played. That, you know, people, oh, everything's already been done. It's like, you've obviously have never looked at, you know, prime numbers or even numbers because all music is is just numbers and math and just scales and harmony. I mean, there's so many million things that can be done. I know nothing. I know nothing. I've, that, that's one of the reasons I haven't learned more is the little bit I've learned, I've been so obsessed with getting to know all of it that I have a hard time wanting to learn more. Because I'm still so busy studying it. And I suspect, you know, some of the more traditional players feel that way about Little Walter. Like, well, God, you know, I've still learned so much Little Walter. That there's so much more to learn. I mean, it's like, yeah, but if you want to be your own cat, definitely that. Some people will naturally develop into their own players without studying formally scales. But that's rare. That's rare. That's, that's a gift from God. If you want to facilitate that shit and you don't want to wait on the big man to deliver, man, you need to study music yeah practice one more practice. word you yeah, mentioned yeah. you mentioned chromatic yeah in the shop downstairs you said i want to have this chromatic and this yeah. one this one yeah so what should a beginner do start on chromatic or start on diatonic oh that's a crazy question i, know, I mean I know. you know because whatever they like the sound of better i would say go get like a stevie wonder record and a toot Seelman's record and then go get a howard levy record and a little walter record Okay, and I would say put them both on, and whatever you like more is where you go first, and then don't be afraid to go something later. But I mean, you know, Stevie Wonder, chromatic playing. I mean, it's the it's, best. It's and, incredible. Yeah, it's, yeah. And, I love and it. Toots yeah. is great too. I mean, I mean, he's a, you know from you know Belgium and everything. He, he's a monster player, but there, I mean, even within that, those are two very different sounding instruments. You know what I mean? And they're both chromatic. Same with Little Walter and Howard. I mean, so it's like you need to really, those are pretty broad spectrum of stuff. I mean, guy might want to be a chord player. I mean, might want to play a chord. I'd like to see more orchestral harmonicas being played by the younger generation. I think they're wonderful. Yeah. And life's pretty great. And I get to meet people like you. And we get to talk about harmonica. I mean, we could do this. If the, the camera wasn't running, we could do this all yeah. night. Except yeah. I'd ask you more than you oh, just, know. you know. Yeah. Well, thanks for all, all the things Dude, you, I you, love you showed us thanks. and you told us. And I think you should go to the next gig now. Yeah, I got to get to the gig. Yeah, yeah I got to figure out my amp. <laughs>